Sustainability rests on the principle that we must meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. One third of food grown globally is never eaten. The UK wastes approximately 13 million tonnes of food per year from farm to fork. Post-farm gateways cost £17 billion pounds and 20 million tonnes in greenhouse gas emissions, which is the equivalent to the pollution of one in four cars in the UK. My grandparents' generation, who lived through rationing, respected the food they had and the challenges in the supply chain. Even my parents had set meals each week, which they still speak fondly of now. Sundays was always a roast, Monday was using leftover meat in a shepherd's pie, fish on Fridays. Any leftover vegetables would be used in bubble and squeak, and salads were usually grown in their back garden. There was very little processed food and hardly anything wasted at all. Essentially better management of our resources. I have to admit that food waste seemed like a distant topic to me, something I couldn't really make an impact towards. There was a certain detachment from my responsibility for food, but I've realised that my small changes collectively with others could make a big difference to our world and also our bank accounts. It's an issue that we can all help towards, we just need to be on board and realise the importance of our actions. I'm talking to a retailer, a charity and a zero waste chef about their views on the food waste issue. The scandal of food waste goes beyond consumers, which in contrast is extensively measured and reported. Over 20% is wasted at farm level. I'm on my way to chat with Ben Pugh, CEO of FarmDrop, to ask him about how his successful business is close to zero waste. How does FarmDrop differ to traditional so farm drop differs to traditional supermarkets in a lot of ways. We're kind of the antithesis really in all ways. Apart from function, we, we make it really easy for people to fill their kitchen cupboards and fridges with food. Uh, the, the really major differences are that we only source from the most ethical, sustainable producers. And my simple rule around that is that unless I'll take my three-year-old to visit a farmer because it's a really nice place where the animals are being really well looked after and the crops aren't being overly sprayed, well then we won't distribute their food. And it sounds quite basic, but it seems to have looked after us pretty well. Um, and then the other reason that we're really different from supermarkets is that we're, we're really the first people ever to create something close to a zero waste system. So what I mean by that is that every item of fresh food that we take receipt of has already been actually bought and paid for by a customer. So farmers will go and cut lettuce and spinach from the ground only because actual customers have ordered it and by the time they arrive with us they know that they've sold absolutely everything that they deliver. And, and we think that's a really big difference because for consumers they know they're, they're supporting a zero waste system and for farmers they're just saving a load of money because waste apart from being terrible for the environment it's just terrible for farmer profitability as well. And how do your farmers and producers manage their supply and demand um, to avoid sort of inevitable waste? Yeah so, so, so we're really proud at FarmDrop of being the first company to enable farmers to see real-time customer order flow via our mobile apps so at the moment there are hundreds of farmers dotted around um, southern England who are seeing real-time customer orders and we're also doing a lot of work to give them much more accurate forecasting data and, and really we, we just see them as another group of customers and we're doing everything we can to give them a brilliant experience and, and cut their waste as close as possible to zero. Why do you think food waste is such a difficult tackle and why do you think we haven't been able to master it yet? So, so food waste is a very complicated issue and I think the main reason that we've got such a problem with it is because of the oligopolistic nature of the supermarket setup. Five companies take roughly 80% of all of the grocery spend in the United Kingdom which is why they're allowed to bully farmers into ridiculous terms. For example, 
if the sales guys change their mind and the night before they're supposed to take a delivery of 100 tonnes of turnips, as Hugh Fernie Whittingstall did a great exposition of, then those turnips just, just get ploughed back into the soil. They're wasted. So actually, the, 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 the core problem around waste is due to the structure of the industry. And, and that's what we're trying to unpick and actually create a system whereby you're taking away all the people in the middle. There's a farmer at one end of an app, there's a customer at the other end of that app. And by dealing with them as, as, as directly as possible with each other, you, you could just massively reduce, reduce the, the food waste. I think the supermarkets could really take a leaf out of Farm Drop's outlook by relaxing cosmetic standards, paying farmers more fairly, marketing seasonal produce, especially when there's unexpected glut, and guaranteeing orders. Currently, the government doesn't publish farm waste with enough attention or weight that's given to household food waste. You know, we need a real analysis of the power relations between retailers and producers that will drive data-driven strategies. The donation of waste makes absolute sense and is hugely welcomed by charities such as Fair Share and Food Cycle. I'm on my way to Food Cycle to chat to their lead volunteer, Alex Cameron, and some of their guests about the charity's environmental and social impacts. Alex, can you explain how Food Cycle works and also the ethos behind it? Absolutely. Food Cycle is a nationwide charity um, and so we run one hub of Food Cycle here in Maribyrn. Um, and Food Cycle takes surplus food from local supermarkets and cook free community meals. They're open to anyone, no one needs to prove that they need the food, but the idea is to combat food waste, food poverty and social isolation. Here at Marylebone, we cook here at West London Synagogue and then we take the food from here up to St Paul's Church where we serve about 50 guests each week. Um, how many meals have you served overall and how much food have you saved? Wow, so um, we cook um, a three course meal every week um, for about 50 people as I said um, and we've been doing it now for two years so it works out that I think we have served something close to 2,000 meals now which is pretty exciting um, and we pick up on average about 70 kilograms of food each week. Now that's not all food that you can use for a meal. Um, some of it is fruit and veg, which is what we use to create that three course meal. But a lot of it that we get is bread. Um, so I would say that we kind of pick up, we've probably picked up a good couple of tons of food um, in the two years that we've been doing it. But equally, I would say about half of that is bread <laughs> or croissants or breaded products, all that kind of stuff that we get from supermarkets that our guests love to take home uh, but aren't necessarily great at making a three course meal. And have you seen the amount of that food that supermarkets donate increase? Definitely, since we started for sure. Um, and I think that is part of the whole um, public conversation about food waste, really. Um, Tesco got in touch with us actually to try and donate food, um, which when we first started was unheard of. So it's wonderful that f supermarkets are getting on board with this. Um, there's still a long way to go um, and actually there's still the question of we need to do something so that there isn't food waste rather than the fact that we need to use up the food waste that there is. Um, and so that's a bigger conversation that I think society will end up getting onto. Um, and there's um, other legislation that could be passed as well. So um, France have a law now that if you're a supermarket of a certain size, you get fined if you don't give away your food waste to charity. Um, and so laws like that are things that people are um, advocating for in the UK now because um, it just makes sense. Uh, there's no point sending good food to the landfill. Exactly. And it makes sense to marry it with people who, who need it. Absolutely, well. yeah. I'm chatting to a group of guests at Food Cycle about why they love coming each week. Look here! Look here! Um, well, I've been coming since it started in this church for well, about a couple of years, I think, two and a half years, something like that. That's the highlight of my Wednesday, yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. We eat the nice food, delicious food that they are serving, complete from uh, starter soup or whatever starter they could serve us, up to the dessert and tea and coffee. I just like coming for the company. The food's good most weeks as well. 
To have a three course meal that is food that was going to be gone to waste is even more amazing, um, magnificent, you know. The staff are wonderful, the people, it's just a warm, happy, comforting, a lovely feeling to sit down and eat, sharing a meal with people. What I like is that it's um, food is not being thrown away like in a lot of places. I mean, uh, it, was, it breaks my heart when I see food being thrown away because I've been to countries that were poor and I really did used to see the poverty in them countries. I just couldn't believe it. I just love what Food Cycle does as it's tackling two issues simultaneously, turning our news feed into something beautiful nutritionally and socially. You know, Britain's voted the loneliest country in the EU and younger generations are said to be lonelier than any other age group in the UK. So a charity such as Food Cycle is great for combating social isolation. However, it's barely making a dent in the available leftovers. The growing relationship between retailers and charities is good and setting precedent. However, it is distracting us from the real issue, which is that supermarkets are wasting food. This lady in Denmark helped to reduce food waste by up to 25% in the past five years. Her name is Selena Joel, and she sent me some really simple, easy tips on how to reduce waste in the household. 70% of post-farm gate waste happens at home and 60% of that is edible. So if we could all just follow this advice, then we're gonna be making a huge difference. Firstly, photograph what's in your fridge so you're not doubling up on a thing when you go to buy. Don't give in to multi-buy or discount offers and be an advocate of imperfect fruit and vegetables so that supermarkets buy these from farmers earlier on in the supply chain. Try to cook and bulk and then freeze. And 25% of waste is because we don't empty packaging thoroughly enough. 20% is because we don't know the difference between used by and best before. Used by is for fresh produce, so stick to that date, but best before is more for dry goods and is just a guideline, so use your judgment. I'm on my way to meet head chef Doug McMaster, founder of Zero Waste Restaurant Silo in Brighton and Cub in East London. I want to find out how he sustains a zero waste restaurant and his views on how we can address the issue. Doug, can you tell us about Cub and Silo and how your kitchens operate? Sure. So something that Silo has developed by default, um, because we literally do not have a bin at Silo, um, and because we trade directly with farmers and producers, your relationship to food changes uh, quite dramatically. Food becomes so much more of a precious object, of a precious resource. So you treat it differently, you look at it differently, um, and you certainly act with far greater commitment to, I guess, maximizing those resources. So like, by default, nothing, you don't want to put something in a bin, you want to put it on a plate, but it has to, of course, be delicious. Um, has to have pertinence to the bigger picture. And what has evolved is this uh, way of cooking, which is, I would describe as, I guess, contemporary natural cuisine. It might sound a bit pretentious, but um, <laughs> it's just a way of um, appreciating the nature that has gone into the food, um, which I think goes a long way. You know, literally speaking, there is little to no um, food waste. Well, there is no food waste. Uh, there's, we have in both sites different composting systems where all of the eventual food waste gets composted. Um, but the point is, it's kind of a, an oxymoron because the point is nothing goes into the compost, you know, into that system that we have put there as a harness. Do you think that food waste generally holds enough weight in our society? Uh, no. No, it's, um, it's so easy to put things in a bin. There is absolutely no penalty. There is no, um, there's no guilt. Yeah. Um, these things happen because of an industrial food model. Mm -hmm. Industrialism is a way of detaching us from where food is grown. And because of that disparity, there is um, little or no respect for that production. And thus food becomes um, expendable. Um, we put it in the bin and there's no guilt. Um, and obviously that doesn't work, that doesn't bode well for 
you know, this, this uh, spinning orb that we yeah. live on. Um, yeah. And, you know, we're starting only to now really understand the, um, you know, the result of these actions and feel the penalty. Um, so, yeah, I don't think there's enough, um, you know, awareness of the sort of bigger picture um, and that will hopefully change. We can't ignore the food waste situation any longer or think that our seemingly tiny input won't make a difference. Currently, the Coltel Commitment 2025, which is a voluntary agreement between all areas of the supply chain, isn't ambitious enough as it doesn't include farm waste and the reduction aim needs to be increased from 20 to 50% to bring us in line with the UN Sustainable Development Goal. From farm to fork, there are decisions made every day that affect the sustainability of our environment, whether that's opting for locally produced, sustainably farmed food, dining at a zero waste restaurant, making the most of leftovers at home and getting more organised, we can all shape the future of the food system also by talking to our local MPs, talking to local supermarkets or perhaps volunteering at a food charity, we can spark change and bring this issue to the forefront. You know, this saves our environment, but it also makes logical sense for everybody as well. We just all need to get on board. Mm -hmm.